Let's talk today about how to fight outnumbered. Look, I know that a lot of you want to start to split from your squad and start to 1v2, 1v3, and 1v4 so that you can get more kills. So today, we're going to be doing a hybrid breakdown. I'm going to be giving you some insight into my thought process and gameplay strategy when I know that I'm fighting outnumbered while also breaking down this game right here, which is a 25 kill solo trios win on Rebirth. You heard that correctly. It's solo trios. This was pre-Fortune's Keep. I went into the archives a little bit, but it's a great game to understand how to fight outnumbered. Now, in terms of my tips, for you. I've got five tips that we're going to be covering and paying attention to. The first is going to be patient upon the approach. You hear me say this all the time. When I know that I'm fighting outnumbered, I'm looking to get a clean down and thirst on the first enemy. And there's a reason for that, which I'll talk about in a second. Now, tip number two is going to be execution. You got to hit your shots well. You got to use your movement. Understand that teams stack when they are in danger, right? Hear me out. Teams stack when they're in danger. If you go to shoot the first guy and you're not able to get that down, that guy tells his teammates that he just got shot at. And now all of a sudden you're dealing with a stack team a lot of times when you are pushing teams you got to be patient then you got to execute which gives us that next piece of information right as soon as we get the down and thirst we figure out where those next teammates are which allows us to make a decision now from there we kind of have two choices and we're going to really cover this and break this down so i know i'm going quick here because i want to jump into the gameplay and really see it in action but at that point we can reposition now when we talk about repositioning two things that we reposition for the first is going to be after a kill right we can either a immediately challenge another enemy or we can reposition to be unpredictable right here you're going to see this not going to reposition i'm going to immediately challenge this guy we challenge the first guy we get the down and thirst or almost get the thirst now we challenge the second guy and you see right here because of the execution and because of the fact that i don't take a lot of damage allows me to continually challenge now the other situation and this is where we start talking about pushing versus getting pushed right i'm always going to be looking to push teams but what happens when they shoot me first or i don't get off to a good start reset the fight i'm gonna play fast i'm gonna be repositioning i'm gonna try to find a different angle after i played up and then i can get back into that situation now the last thing that i want to talk about we're gonna get one more kill here i think then we're gonna get loady and then we'll really start to see how these things apply and i'll do a quick review for you i promise everything is a 1v2 situation the way i view it so in a 1v2 situation, I'm looking to get a clean kill, at which point I can immediately challenge that next enemy, and I just have to win that 1v1 fight. Well, in a 1v3 situation, if I get a clean first kill, then now I'm in a 1v2 situation. So I either challenge the second enemy if they're split, right? If I get a clean down and thirst, and the other two are very separated, I can immediately challenge that next guy. But... If I, you know, they're close together, then I'm going to reposition and try to find a different angle, at which point I can get back in that fight, same way I would a 1v2 situation. I look to get a clean thirst, and then I go ahead and challenge the next guy. Same thing with the 1v4. I get the first kill. I'm going to go ahead, see where the other three guys are. I'm either going to challenge or I'm going to reposition. And everything that I think about is a 1v2 situation, especially once you factor in farming. So five tips. I know I blew through those pretty quickly, but we got patience execution information repositioning and 1v2s last thing if you are looking to get better at rebirth and fortunes keep hit that subscribe button down below i'm a four key kd player i do videos every single day just helping people get better make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are looking to increase your pr or increase your kd let's go ahead and pull this back here this is a good example of exactly what i was just telling you so we're going to be patient, right? You're going to see me fighting in Nova 6 a lot. You're going to see me fighting in this stairwell a lot. Why? This is a good area when it comes to patience. Am I camping? No. I'm trying to get a clean down and thirst. We get the down. We get the thirst. Now, where are the two other enemies, right? So one is over on the boat, and one is right here down below me. But look which way he's moving. Now, notice that because I didn't take any damage, I can immediately go challenge this guy. I don't have to reposition. What I have to do is anticipate, get the first shot, use a little bit of movement. All I need to do is strafe a little bit, and I need to hit my shots, okay? Easier said than done, I know, but I'm going to immediately challenge because notice he's pushing up, right? Notice the stairwells right here, so I'm going to go meet him. Do I anticipate? Yes. I use a little bit of strafe. I hit my shots. We're able to get the down and thirst. By the way, I am using the STG. Like I said, this was pre-Fortune's Keep, so the STG was still really good at this time. Going to try to see what I can find. By the way, the ending of this game is another absolutely insane situation when it comes to clutching end games as well as dealing with 1v3 situations. So we got 11 kills here, 10 other teams, very healthy lobby, and I know that I'm feeling good here. Trying to see what I can find. We're going to grab information. Didn't quite have enough for a UAV, but I know that one's below me, and I know that one's kind of somewhere over or was over on boat right there. Yeah, he's flying above me. Trying to see what I can find. Now I get caught in a weird spot here. One down below to my left. 
could be either in this building or in this little room or in this corner and i've got one up top and what you're going to see a lot of times is when i'm repositioning is i'm playing super quick and i'm just trying to get to a point where i can re-engage that fight so i'm actually going to go challenge up top because that's the easier fight to pick don't see him so we're back down trying to find that little window of opportunity that first thirst to then be able to start to challenge the next people. So I'm going to play this way. I'm going to be unpredictable. And like I said, he's in this room right here. I didn't want to just barge through that door because that's a weird angle. We're going to go a little bit further around. Now, where is everybody? Okay, one's over on the boat and one is kind of back by harbor. So nothing to worry about with that team right there. But we're going to have more teams playing around here. Although I am going to immediately go challenge that. I forgot about that. I'm going to go check that guy I just missed. Now, we get information about people above me. So I can't worry about that team anymore. That team's kind of rotated away. So let's go ahead and challenge this new team. Trying to see what I can find. Trying to get that clean. I hear footsteps up top. I'm not playing too over aggressive here. What I'm trying to avoid is putting myself in a one in a situation where I'm getting shot by all three players at the same time. Also notice that I'm constantly pushing. By being patient, I'm putting myself in a position where I'm not getting pushed because they don't know where I am just yet, right? So I'm still the one kind of pushing here. We're going to go tag this guy. We get the down, we get the thirst, right? Now I get two people above me to my right. Notice how close they are together. But I also know that there is another team right here. So there's a lot of information going on at one time that I'm gathering. But that's part of fighting outnumbered. And, and one thing I do want to say is fighting outnumbered is not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. You're fighting a full team or a quarter of a team or whatever it may be. You can't fight a quarter of a team. You know, however many people. You're fighting multiple people at one time. It's not supposed to be easy. Now we challenge this guy. As I turn this corner, he was getting shot from some else and i just don't get a good jump on that guy so i'm gonna reposition now we challenge here and let's talk about this right real quick why do i do what i do here okay so i challenge this guy right so that guy's not going to that guy's not gonna challenge me right here right he's gonna he's clearly pushing down and i catch this one right up top here so i immediately try to catch this guy off guard so i don't hyper focus on one the moment i don't see him pushing right notice he kind of pushed but he didn't commit to it and he threw the thermite. I'm out of there. So we're going to go challenge this guy. We get the down. We get the thirst. Okay. One above. One down below. All the way down below me to the left. We're just going to keep playing fast here. And this is where we start to talk about anticipation. Because I'm not dealing with a lot of information. I'm going to be... Be, uh, acting based upon pings and upon shots being fired, but I don't have a UAV to fully understand where everybody is. Once again, I'm just looking for a clean kill somewhere. And the reason I'm moving so fast and anticipating is because I'm not totally sure where people are. So I can get a clean first kill if I'm anticipating well and getting that first shot. Now we challenge around this corner. This is where we start to talk about the reset, right? Remember I said repositioning, we reset. Notice as I challenge this team, there's three guys very close together. This is the situation that I want to avoid. Yes, I'm in a position where I can get a clean kill, although this is outside the Blixen's range, so it's a tough spot to be in. I'm going to go ahead and back off there. Plus, we get hit with the prox mine. We're going to full disengage. Now, I'm going to be totally honest. I thought I saw somebody in this window, which is why I play this the way I do. I thought this was actually a person, like one of those ghillie suits or something like that, which is why I put myself between cover. And now I'm going to go ahead. Maybe I, I clear it. That was a bad play. I don't know why I thought somebody was in here and then I completely ignored it right there. That was just, that was not a good play right there. That's a situation where if I get, if there is somebody there and I get shot by that guy, that's like, I knew he was in there or I thought he was in there. Why did I ignore him? So we're going to go ahead and play top down here. We're going to take the zip up, which is a little bit of a risky play. We're going to get back to the top and we're going to start playing down the stairs again, which is how I love to play Nova. Pushing up that middle stairwell is really tough. So I generally like to play top. I hear the revive happen. We're going to anticipate there's the Iskra skin again. That guy's one of the better players in this lobby. Notice that one other player is to my right on my level, right? No arrow above or below, but I have low plates. So I just got to get out of here. This isn't a challengeable situation. So I'm actually going to get out. Then we're going to use the stim for the speed boost. Then we're going to start plating. And at this point, I'm, I've created some distance between him and I. So I'm feeling a little bit better. Now, as we turn this corner, double procs. We drop down to take a little bit less damage. And I, I got really lucky here. I'm going to be totally honest. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is part of fighting in solo trios versus fighting outnumbered, right? There's no room for error in solo trios. There's a little bit of room for error if you have teammates. But what ends up happening is I put myself between, I put this wall between him and I, and I keep playing around this wall until I can get plated. 
I hear one behind me. So now they fight each other. But what I want to really highlight here is as soon as I'm full plated, I've got 40 rounds in the Blixen, so I'm good to go challenge. I'm back in this fight. Like, I'm going to go take advantage of the third-party opportunity, which then gives me back up. Let's talk about our five tips, right? If I third-party somebody and I get a cheeky down and thirst, all of a sudden, that's an easy, clean kill. That gives me the information to then figure out if I need to reposition, then we go from there. As I'm pushing right, I hear this guy right here. We get the thirst. Now, I know that there's another team. So I see one right there, and I hear one down the stairs. This is where we talk about acting quickly, and this is a whole different level of gameplay here, and that's why I chose this game in particular, because I immediately go challenge this guy. Now we get the down. Don't really have a ton of plates. We get some plates right there. I try to see if he's challenging, but he doesn't, so we're going to go ahead and reposition. Now watch how we play this. This is where we start to talk about we get that down and we get that down. We don't get the thirst, right? But I know that there's another one down there, which means he's got to commit to the revive or that guy's got to burn self. So we're repositioning while plating to get to the point where I want to challenge to next. And I do that because what you're going to see here is that even though I spent a lot of time, right? I got the down. Then I tried to see if he was going to re-challenge. Then I repositioned while plating. Then I pushed down the stairs. This guy's still only a bullet, right? So that guy's still only a bullet. We get the down. We get the thirst. Now there's one left that we can go ahead and start to push over this way. Now, this is where you can farm teams, especially in trios. I said quads is kind of a different... Quads is a little bit tougher. It's the hardest game mode because it's harder to break down those 1v2 situations because you have an extra player. But in trios, a lot of the times what I do is I get a clean down and thirst. Then based on that information, I immediately go challenge the second guy and the last guy I just farm and let him live. So that's kind of how I break down 1v3 situations into... It's a 1v2 plus a farm. And if I'm going to farm that guy or if you're going to farm somebody, right? That means you're better than them so even if you take damage on that second guy you can easily get away this is something i talked about with tcap where a lot of times what you'll see is if i'm fighting two players like in trios right i know i get the down and thirst then i go ahead i challenge or the other two guys are together i'll go challenge and i'll take damage on that second guy i'll get the thirst knowing that i can get away and it's something that you can do as you're starting to farm if if you're in trios or quads and you only see two players I do kind of oversell for a thirst sometimes because I know I can get away and I want to know how many teammates are still alive. Now, we're going to go... This lobby dies out, actually. Does that make sense? I think that should make sense to you that a lot of times in trios and quads, if there's two people, I focus on getting one full kill as opposed to fighting both of them if possible because I want to know if one of those is the last player alive. I don't want to wipe that team. One over to my left on my level. He's going to push up the stairs right here. Now, let's talk about endgame here. Okay, end game. 1v3 for the end game. I know exactly where they are. Obviously, cluster strike going on left. So we got to, you know, we know they're over here. I'm going to go ahead and play, uh, try to hold them out, right? Where's my power position? Where's my cover? Now, notice we still have 44 seconds left in respawn, which means this team absolutely can respawn back in even if I kill them, which puts me in a tough spot. Now, I'm going to try to see what I can find here. I'm going to try to get a kill right here to, you know, figure out where the teammates are as well as start to kind of clutch up this end game. We see the zip go up, right? So I saw the, the zip go up. I saw him build it. I see one flying that way. Not quite able to get the thirst because he obviously didn't have enough fall damage. That would have been nice to get the thirst there. That would have totally changed everything. Instead, he just gets downed. And I actually think he has self-revive. I think he lives. Now I see one right here. We're able to get the down. We're able to get that thirst almost. Not quite. And then I get shot from the left. Right, so I get shot from the left here. So now I am going to go focus on this thirst. But notice my cover right here. I've kind of put this piece of cover between me and that enemy. So I can get the thirst, figure out where those teammates are. So one of them is on the gondola. So I got to really be careful from that enemy. And the other one is up in grandma's house, obviously looking towards the roof, trying to get that angle. Now one's down below me. So we're going to go ahead and challenge this guy. But we're going to get operation scan in a second occupation scan so i definitely need to go down here i need to keep myself safe from this so that i don't get you know i don't give away my positioning i need to keep that element of surprise and keep them guessing or else enemies stack when they are in danger if they know where i am they are most likely going to stack that situation so i actually challenge this guy before because i know he's probably prone right he's not moving here so i'm going to go ahead and challenge him while i can and you're going to see exactly what happens we get the down we get the thirst then we're going to drop below knowing that the last enemy is still up above in grandma's house now last enemy disappears because he's obviously laying prone as well i'm just going to give a little spoiler here they get all bought back i'm going to have to fight this whole three again which is where the 25 comes in so what do we do we buy uav 
We pop. We buy another one for the road. I probably should have bought gas mask, to be honest with you. But I do have PDS, which I can use to my advantage. Now, I thought they were trying to get to a position where they can hold me. Right here, where's our power position? Where's our cover? Well, our power position and our cover is in one of these buildings. Because notice where they are. So if I can beat them to one of these buildings, I can just hold them out of circle. One thing I just thought of, guys, I, I am well aware that, and like I said, this is this is tough to do. Starting to split from your squad is tough to do. You're going to make mistakes. Execution is still the most important thing. I didn't highlight it too much in terms of like, yeah, notice how I hit high damage areas. It allows me to get a clean kill. It is crucial because any mistake you make is going to give them an opportunity on you. Now, I noticed that one is over kind of right there. We're able to get the sweat out. This is the sweatier of the players, or at least one of them. And then one is flying in above me, which is actually going to be very very detrimental to my game here and i'll show you why in a second one is up the hill to my right uh by grandma's still or by you know headquarters area and one is over on the roof so i'm kind of in a weird spot i just missed this guy rotating right you'll see him in a second oh i think he pushed down already so i'm gonna go challenge the one on my level why well i need to as i'm pushing here this guy's gonna jump across roofs so now I can't challenge that. You're going to see him. Yep, now he's on the roof closest to me. So I'm going to go challenge that guy on my level. If I could have gotten roof, then what happens is I kill the guy roof. I kill the last guy on my level. We're good. We're in an easy spot. He's right there. So now we go to challenge, and now we're in a 1v1. Does he push? Is he pushing? Not quite sure. So I'm going to go ahead and reposition here. We're going to get to a good spot. Now we're going to replay. It's a 1v1 situation. He shouldn't be able to buy back because he flew back in. But I'm not really in a position where I can get anywhere. Like, I can't get to Roof. He's just going to be holding it. I'm trying to see what his play is. He makes a really good play here, by the way. He makes a really good play. I'm not totally sure what the move is because I don't have... This was not it. I kind of panicked. This was one time that I can say I made a mistake endgame and I was not very calm, cool, collected. Because what's going to end up happening is by the time I get over here, he's already flown across with a disgusting heady. Like, that is that heady is very, very difficult to challenge. And he has a massive advantage. He has the advantage right now. So what am I going to do? I'm going to channel my inner gas play. This is where I talk about sometimes it's okay to make gas plays. And I have to rotate this late because I can't rotate into circle because of the fact that he is already... He's already in that position. If I try to rotate down there, he's just going to shoot me. So, I got double. St I got one stim. I'm okay. I get the circle pull. I Look, this is where sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I get circle pull. If circle pulls the other way, I'm in a really tough spot. As soon as gas opens up or, clo or basically as soon as I'm back in circle, we played up. Now we can go challenge. We have a good idea of where he is. He can't be above me anywhere, so he's got to be over this way somewhere. I catch a quick glimpse. We hit shots with the STG, and right there is the 25 kill solo trios win. I hope you found today's video helpful. As I always say, let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.